Certainly. <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Rickman. Mr. McDowell. Mr. McDowell. Thank you. Mr. Duvall. Here. Mr. Vine. Mr. Davis. Here. Mayor Benjamin. Here. Young people, hopefully it's in the pledge. I know someone's still learning their pledge, but this is a great place to learn it. Come on, young man. She's not going to come. Okay, that's all right. Hey, girls. Y'all want to help us? Yes. And young man. Thank Please you. stand, everyone. All right. Y'all ready? One, two, three. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That was enthusiastic. That was a wonderful, enthusiastic pledge. Thank you, ladies. Red McDonald, would you, would you bless us with a prayer, please, brother? Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for these children who warmed our hearts with their allegiance. Lord, we simply ask that you might bless us now as we continue this process of discerning the will of the city and particularly the will of God. Bless us individually and collectively. Allow us to sense and feel your presence. We ask it in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Reverend McDowell. Um, Madam City Manager. At this time, we would ask for your adoption of tonight's agenda. Is there, is there a motion? So move. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move the previous question. Clark Colorado. Mr. Rickman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Uh, Mr. Mayor, will you ask for any public input related to the agenda items? None, we would ask council to approve the minutes of May 15, 2018 City Council meeting. Is there a motion? Move approval. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, um, move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Mr. Mayor, we would ask that council approves the consent agenda items 3 through 32. All right. Is there a motion? Motion by Mr. Davis. Is there a second? Second. A second. Any discussion? Or, Mr. Mr. Uh, Rickman. Are, are the contracts for our uh, government affairs services, are they, are they up right now? Do they need to be voted on today? Um, we always start them at the beginning of a fiscal year, Mr. Rickman, but certainly we can hold them if that's your pleasure. I just have a question on on the services, and I, I'd be honest, I just have not had a chance to look at the contract. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'll do what the, the majority of con mm -hmm. council would like to do, but if, if it, um, you might put your microphone down a little bit, Daniel. Um, but I'm 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 fine with both of them. If you want to hold them to the next meeting, I'm fine with that. Yeah, uh, if we could, I just got a couple questions I need to clarify. All right. Well, we'll hold items uh, three and four. Uh, the rest of the uh, agenda items five through thirty-two. It's been moved and probably second. Any discussion? Seeing none, move the previous question. Clark, call roll. Mr. Mayor, I was just looking for the item. If you. Would you want to take something else off real quick? I don't want to take it off. One of my observations was, again, one of, it was a, a contract. Well, I, I'm hoping that we continue to look at local participation in some of these high dollar contracts. Um, I still kind of have some angst when I see a high dollar contract. Uh, 
no local participation, and that's you know, 400, 500 million dollars, 200 million dollars going up the interstate. Mr. Which, Davis, which is that, Mr. Davis, we spend a, I hear you, and count a staff, I staff, if you were a fly on the wall, would probably tell you they're tired of hearing me ask the questions that extends our agenda review because I spend a good bit of time asking those questions. If you're talking, I'm not sure which one you're referring to. Some of them that are flood related, we cannot do the programs that we normally do, like Mentor Protege with the 20% mandatory participation that we have for mm -hmm. uh, SMWBE contractors. We still have a local, we still have a local business preference and we uh, as well. Have local business preference. Some of those pol policies you've all established with the federal dollars, it just sure. depends on how we can apply them. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's what you're referring well, to. Well, this one was. There was some pipe work to be done, and I'm just wondering if, um, for example, we don't have a, maybe a small business in Is the it? area that could participate. Because that's a, an area where we, I think, we're kind of lacking in small businesses, minority businesses, women owned businesses that have that experience. And I think the one way we want them to get that experience is to maybe participate somehow, either as a uh, protege or whatever. Um, I'm not, I don't want to go back and pull it, but I'm... Is it time to relook at mentor protege? Is that, is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, I, uh, I, I don't know of any small businesses... In that field. In that field, uh, locally. So it might be something worth the committee taking an up. opportunity to kind of take a look at those when they come through and maybe you know, and ask that question. Mm -hmm. you know. okay. I we'll appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, items 5 through 32, we'll move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. And I have a question. All right, Mr. Rickerman. Um, actually, it's just a request, Madam mm -hmm. um, City Manager. Can you have the staff pull together all the information on the Crane Creek? On, the wood oh, on Crane Creek. Yes, sir. Sure. Um, you know, it seems we're once again evaluating and rehabilitating an area that seems to have millions and millions and millions of dollars pumped into it. I'd like to know how much we've spent and what we've gotten completed and what we have forecasted uh, there as well. Yes, sir. We'll do. Any other discussion around items 5 through 32? All right, seeing none, we have the previous question, Clerk Carterell. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. I'm City Manager. Yes, sir. Moving into a period of presentations, item 33, the recognition of Ms. Mary Rowe for outstanding service in encouraging walking and biking in the City of Columbia, Ms. Dana Higgins, Engineering, Director of Engineering, our City Engineer. <laughs> Good evening. I have the pleasure today to recognize someone that has been amazing in the bike and walk community. Um, Natalie Britt and Mary Rowe started working on uh, discussions with the mayor back in 2012, started formed the Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee. Uh, and ever since then, uh, Mary has just been a dynamo getting things done, bringing encouragement to the walk bike community. They were instrumental in having the bike walk uh, master plan. Um, Mary serves as Director of Programs and Development for Palmetto Conservation Foundation. Uh, some things that they have first implemented was the Handlebar Happy Hour, and I've got a great little picture I'll show everyone that uh, kind of exemplifies <laughs> her excitement on the encouragement. So what Mary did is she created a bike uh, valet, and she had her daughters actually have they would, you could ride your bicycle to Public House and they would park it for free and you could go in and, spe and they had speakers. I know Chief Holbrook came one time and he's implemented the bicycle uh, group and his uh, squads and we've had a lot of different people come in and it's monthly on Wednesday, so uh, very exciting uh, that she added. She has uh, done a lot with our um, May is Bike Month. I know you all have participated in the Mayor's Bike walk and the, uh, the rides and we have uh, so many activities. We are probably the most uh, organized city in the state. Uh, definitely uh, 
tour the taco, three different restaurants on Cinco de Mayo to celebrate, um, going through and to going to each restaurant. Uh, bike to work day, she, uh, everyone would meet at the state house and she would organize a breakfast. It's been at Michael's and Mass General and most recently was the Bank of America building. That was this year. Um, she also would create a finale at the end of bike month with a movie and we've been at 701 this year. It was at the TAPS building so she's kind of moved it around. Something else that she has been a big part of is the open streets uh, we, where we have uh, encouraged the ped pedestrian and bike activities by closing Divine Street from just up from Five Points up to uh, Sims. And the four key values they focused on was uh, sustainable transportation, physical fitness and wellness, civic pride, and living streets. Uh, very active in that and single-handedly organized the volunteers and it was huge success and I think they keep asking when can we do it again. Um, and uh, last year we had the first ever Mayor's Bike Summit uh, that they organized and it was a two-day event where we had mayors and council people throughout the state, all the different cities that came in and everyone who participated really enjoyed it. So. I just uh, want to recognize her tonight and give her a hand of a uh, round of applause for all that she's done, Mary Rowe. I just want to thank everyone uh, in uh, the city of Columbia for uh, all their support. Uh, I met Dana on uh, a trip to Washington where she came along to the bike summit, the National Bike Summit. And it really was through Dana and John Fellows, their passion and believing in what the Bike Pedestrian Advisory Committee could achieve. So it really is the city's vision, it is with the city staff, and we cannot do that unless we're all partnering together. So thank you and continue doing great things for the city. Mary, oh, absolutely. No, Mary, thank you so much. Oh. Uh, you, you've been incredible and um, it's made a, a real tangible difference to quality of life here in the Midlands. And I think uh, we're going to continue making significant investments and connecting the entire community to a healthy, safe uh, infrastructure. So things are, things are good. And, but you and uh, Natalie early on with, with, with the rest of the team here, Done some great work and planted some great seeds. We're going to bear great fruit. All right, let's take a picture. To the manager. Our next um, item, Mayor Benjamin, is an ordinance first reading, item 34, ordinance number 2018-039, granting an encroachment to Jason Chastain and Zamina Chastain for installation and maintenance of landscaping and irrigation within the right-of-way area of the 1700 block of Bannockburn Drive adjacent to 1707 Bannockburn Drive in Richland County. Is there a motion? So move. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, move the previous question. The clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Aye. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Item 35, ordinance number 2018-041, authorizing the city manager to execute a lease renewal agreement with Branch Banking and Trust Company BB&T for the use of 3905 Enzer Avenue, the Lutheran Survey Building. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move with the previous question. Clerk, call roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. 
Resolutions, item 36, resolution number R2018064, authorizing acceptance and dedication of a street known as Arsenal Hill Court, located in the courtyard at Arsenal Hill Subdivision to the City of Columbia. Your motion. So move. Is there a second? Second. This one's been a long time coming, though, hadn't it? Uh, mm -hmm. Move the previous question. Clerk call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Item right. 37, resolution number R2018-071, authorizing the city manager to execute any documents necessary to purchase certain properties affected by the 2015 flood through the property acquisition so program. Is this Second. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir, Mr. McDowell. Just before we, Mr. Wilson, let me ask you a question. Those pieces of property that has already been demolished, of what? Not necessarily, Reverend McDowell. This, this is more of a formality. I think you all had 18 or so other properties right. that you did previously, and these would follow that same suit. I, I'd have to ask staff if these two have, so like, the what program. status they're in, but the program would be uh, to allow us to move forward with acquisition to then demolish the if necessary. The remains the same, though. Yes, sir. It's the okay. same program. I'm sorry. I don't. I'm sorry. If staff could come forward to answer this question too about any that are pending, because these will kind of come piecemeal. Here come, here come Missy. <laughs> about any more that are pending. Mm -hmm. So we have so 18 were approved in April. This is two mm -hmm. more. We have four more that are pending that will come forward to you. Miss Wilson's correct. So once these are the closings occur, once the city actually purchases the property, the properties will be demolished and turned to green space. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Missy. All right. All right. Move the previous question, Mr. Mayor. Right. Clerk, call roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Other matters, item 38, council is asked to approve the installation of four speed humps on Waccamaw <laughs> Avenue as requested by the Public Works Department. Have we found some peace there, or, or what's, what's the latest? Uh, we did find, Mr. I know Mayor. our staff worked with the neighborhood and Mr. Duvall. Everybody's good, Robert? Yes. All right. would, would Ms. Devine hold that opinion as well? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. is, there, is there a motion? I move we approve the speed bumps on Waccamaw. We, we, Ms. Devine and I both attended the meeting, um, and after some discussion, uh, it was almost unanimous to approve the uh, compromise on where the speed bumps would be located. So all minds are clear? All minds were clear. Hearts too? All right. <laughs> uh, so, uh, it's moving probably second. Um, with the previous question, Clerk Carterall. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Mr. Mayor, we will move into a period of the fiscal year 2018 2019 mm -hmm. hospitality tax and accommodations tax funding recommendations. Um, Ms. Fanning may come forward to assist. I'm sure Council has some comments. I know, I know there's, a, there's a good bit of discussion, kind of, if, if you guys don't mind, I'll lay the foundation. I know Mr. Duval has some ideas that he wants to share uh, as well. We expect that there will be some surplus funding that we can um, appropriate at a later date, uh, uh, but my motion and recommendation will be to approve the committee's uh, recommendations, both HTAX and ATAX, and look at the surplus, which should be um, um, mid six figures uh, and determine that uh, disposition uh, at another meeting. Uh, but uh, move to approve the committee's recommendations. All right. Mr. Mayor, please. Mm -hmm. you, did, you didn't get a second on that. No, that wasn't a motion. That wasn't a motion. That was, that, that was, a that, that was not a motion. That was a statement. That, yeah, okay. A statement. okay. Mm -hmm. You want to take the ATAX first? Uh, sure. ATAX. The ATAX is different than the ATAX. Uh, the history on the ATAX is that it has been split between Experience Columbia and Lake Murray Country, uh, 8515, and the committee uh, did not do that this time because the request from the Lake Murray Country did not reach the 15 percent level. I, I would like to make a motion that we approve the 8515 split, which would be 2,075,700 to. Uh, experience Columbia and 366,300 to Lake Murray, which gets the 85-15 split. The 
Jim, did you want to Second. say something, Mr. Chairman? I was just going to say that we, in, in taking the uh, request, the, the Lake Murray country's request was 325. We would have done exactly what Councilman Duvall just said. Um, so we would have no objection to, to Howard's motion. Any discussion? Mr. Davis moves the previous question, approve the ATAX recommendations with that exception. Uh, move the previous question, Kurt call the roll. Mr. Rickman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Aye. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. All right, uh, Mr. Duvall. Mr. Mayor, on the H tax, uh, it's a little bit complicated. Uh, Ginger Fanning gave us a memo. Who's Ginger? Dee I call her Ginger because that is her given name, I'm and I don't joking. go with the Dee I call her Ginger. Uh, Ginger gave us a memo today at 11.15 or something like that that had a list of organizations that are normally specified in the budget that were not specified this year. There's just one uh, figure in the budget, and she wants us to approve tonight the memo that she sent, which begins with Columbia Museum of Art and ends with One Columbia for Arts and History. And I would like to make one change in that at the request of Historic Columbia. Uh, they are requesting that the um, amount for Historic Columbia that's 155,000 be reduced to 135,000 and that the 551,500 be increased to 601,500. With that addition, I'd like to move that we accept the, the Fanning uh, memo and that it be, what was the word I was supposed to use here, that for eligible expenses? For eligible expenses. For eligible expenses or of the H tax. No, and then we'll uh, talk about, I, talk I, about I, the rest of them. No, let's see. Now, which memo is this, Ginger? This one right here. It's the one she sent out today. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the purpose of today's memo is just to state what line item, line item requests and appropriations and the goal is to there's the committee recommendations, and those were the line item, council line items. Um, they're all inclusive on the main spreadsheet. Okay, so, I guess so why, so why is this, why, why, why do we need a separate memo? Uh, um, it allocates the money that's listed as one line item in the budget. Okay, it just breaks it, breaks it down. It breaks it down. I know Historic Columbia's um, change was, was uh, recognizing one of the uh, Columbia SC 63. Uh, projects completed, so needing twenty thousand dollars less there, and but needing fifty thousand more for maintenance of city-owned buildings. Right, if I remember correctly. Right. Uh, but that nets out. What is, the, what is that other thirty or so? If my math's right, it would add come to from, the, where's it would it come add from? to the total. Okay. Okay. All right. So the one fifty-five is reduced to one thirty-five. It, it, it recognizes completion of one project. I forget what it was. It was maybe it was Man Simons. It was one of the projects. It was a uh, word. It was, um, let's see. It was. Um, let's see. Ward one project. All right. All right. Second the motion. Call for the question. Question. Mr. Duval, would you mind restating your motion? It was it was it was um, affirming the components in Didi's memo of the day, laying out the amount of line items uh, with the two changes, uh, the money appropriated for the Columbia SC 63 project reduced by twenty thousand dollars. I'd be recognizing the completion of the Man Simons project, but the overall amount um, this, in, in this, the larger line item up by $50,000 uh, to appropriate for the maintenance of city-owned buildings. So we'll, we, once you recognize those numbers. Uh, um, 
135 for historic Columbia, reducing the 155 to 135, and increasing the 551 500 to 601 500. And I'll give you this memo. Thirty thousand more. Yeah. And that is specifically for maintenance of city-owned buildings that they manage. Thank you. All right. Um, Okay, and you had readiness in the previous question. What's the rationale for the increase in historic? They, the buildings uh, in their portfolio that we own, that they maintain, the added cost of maintaining those buildings, they've also reduced uh, one of their line items by 20000 recognizing the completion of one of those so projects. They, so it was an add on. They backed the add, they added, they added, the add yeah, on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so it's, net, it's a net, net, 30. 30. It's net 30. It's net 30. It's net 30. All right. With the previous question, Kurt call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Thank you. All right. Um, next, and now, this is where the kumbaya ends, my friend, so go ahead. Go for it. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd, I'd like to move we approve the recommendations of the H Tax Committee with the following Second. exceptions. Uh, I would like to hold uh, until next month uh, any allocations to City Center Partnership, to Regional Sports Marketing, to U.S. Gamecock Club, and to the State Agricultural and Mechanical Society at the State Fair until uh, Mrs. Devine returns next month. Appreciate that. Um, I, as I told you before the meeting, I support the allocation of the, of the additional surplus funds as Council sees fit. Uh, I'd rather approve the H Tax Committee recommendations and and then uh, address the excess. If in fact you want to take those up, I'm, I'm going to vote against that motion. Uh, if if it receives second, uh, if you want to take them up one by one, I think it'd be a huge mistake to um, uh, to seek to defund the, the defund some of those organizations. If you want to hold uh, the the um, State Fair and, and USC for another discussion. I'm fine with that. I, I, I think as we prepare for um, uh, the would, March would, Madness coming to Columbia for the first time, <clears throat> I, I don't want to um, well, uh, slow down uh, regional marketing. And also, obviously, I don't want to slow down what we've been doing here in the city center. I think that's, that's a huge mistake. But if you want to take it one by one, um, that might be a way to all right. discuss it if, if, at all. If, if you want to take them one by one, then I would recommend, let's see, how are we going to do this? <laughs> Uh, why, why, don't you, why don't you just hold those two and, and leave the other ones alone, and we, we can we can rock and roll. I don't want to leave the other ones on. I think. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, let's go through it. I, in the H Tax Committee recommendations, I would recommend that City Center Partnership be funded at one hundred thousand instead of two hundred and sixty thousand. The rationale behind that is that the City Center Partnership. Uh, is participating in a business improvement district that has been improved, approved by the city council, uh, which creates about a million dollars a year in revenue for CCP. And they uh, should not be getting an additional funding from the H tax when they are funded by a tax that's approved by city center, by um, city council. And, and, and I'd say with some historical perspective, I served on the, on the founding board of the City Center Partnership um, with no financial interest, just as a Main Street property owner. Uh, the is a self-imposed fee on people who have business interests in the City Center that pay that additional funding to help do the things that have, have turned Main Street into, in, into what it is. So it's, it's not some um, additional issue. But we, we can take, I mean, you have the prerogative of, of, of making each of those recommendations. Uh, that's 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 your that's your first one. All right. Um, is there, is there, I, I have is made there, the motion that we fund them at a hundred thousand. Yeah, that's your first. Um, that's your first motion. Is there a second for that? Uh, second it for discussion. All right. Uh, any other discussion on it? I think it's a I think it's a bad idea, and um, I don't want to get into tabling and a bunch of procedural issues because then the the parliamentarian down here gets real busy. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to vote against the motion, and we'll take up the, the rest and um, okay. move the previous question. Kirk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? No. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Davis? No. Mayor Benjamin? No. All right. 
Um, next. Uh, I do think we need to have a discussion. I mean, I think there's there's some fundamental things there directly at some point at the proper time. Oh, absolutely. We can, we, can, we can talk about that and, and all the other issues we anticipated we would take up in, yeah. in, a, in a work session, uh, and this was then this was accelerated. So, uh, uh, you want to try next number one? two? Next one. Mr. Mayor? Yes. yes. I would hope that that conversation ensues itself <laughs> at our next work session. And if we could do that and make that a priority for Absol conversation. Ab ab absolutely. Um, Mr. Mayor, I, I, uh, I also um, look forward for a discussion on that um, so there can be some further clarific clarifications and um, justification for the, and understanding the motion. Sure. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Yes, yes sir. I'd like to move that we reduce the regional sports marketing um, to zero. Uh, they were in the H tax committee recommendation for $80,000. Uh, that is an arm of Experience Columbia, which has the A tax, and they are having a $276,700 increase in the A tax, which is one of the largest. I think it is the largest increase of any funded agency in the city. And I think that regional sports marketing has plenty of room to use the growth of that $276,000 uh, for marketing. I'm all in favor of the Experience Columbia, and I'm all in favor of marketing for March Madness, but they need to live in the ATAX, not in the HTAX. The, um, uh, again, uh, Post Confederate battle flag. This is our very first opportunity to host the NCAA tournament uh, in, I'm old in Columbia, and uh, it'll have more eyes on the city uh, than I think any event short of a Super Bowl. And I, I think we need to make sure that we're, we're prepared to to do it and do it and do it right. And so I'll be voting against that one as well. The other two, I'm, I'm happy to hold uh, as I uh, articulated to you, but I think, that, I think that's, I think that's a mistake. But that but that's that's your motion. Is there is there a second? Motion fails for lack of a second. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Mr. 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 Duval. My third motion is to reduce the USC Game Clock Club to a zero. Uh, they're in the H tax for forty thousand dollars for security for the football games, and um, if there's one money-making event in the city of Columbia, it's the several games that they have out at Williams Bryce Stadium, and I think that. Since USC takes money off the tax rolls of the city of Columbia every time they breathe, that we should not be funding uh, the Alumni Association for security at football games. So I, I make the motion that we take them to zero. Is that a pass through? Is that a pass through? Is that, does that? Well, it is in the sense that our PD officers are working out there, and typically those are the funds that. Offset yeah. that. Um, Howard, can we can we effort. can we hold those last two for the larger H tax discussion okay. as opposed to, as opposed to defunding them? Sure. So how about if we approve the H tax committee recommendations, save those two recommendations for the larger H tax discussion? All right, we we will approve we will approve the H tax committee's recommendation with the exception of the Gamecock Club and the State Agricultural and Mechanical Society, which we will hold in next month. Second. Any further discussion? And, um, and obviously, we'll also have discussion uh, for those of you who are all um, looking for additional um, uh, support of, of the of the surplus uh, dollars. We'll have that op that opportunity to discuss that when we have a little more time to to deliberate. But John, thank you and your committee for your for your thank hard you. work. Um, let's let's uh, if you want to say something first, Mr. Chairman. Please. I would just like to say thank you to Council for acting so quickly on this, rather than putting off till next month because so many people are really counting on it. Well, we still have to vote, John, so let's do that first. Uh, <laughs> move, move the previous question, Kirk Colorado. Hey, we'll go. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rickerman. Four. Ace tax committee I'm, recommendations. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. And for clarification, Ace tax committee recommendations holding those two uh, items uh, for, the, for the larger H tax discussion and discussions around surplus uh, spending. All right. Again, then, thank you. 
Thank you. Thank, Thank you, John. John. And Mr. Mayor, while we're on this discussion, we, you know, obviously with scheduling in the summer months, the request that you all made was to have a committee of the whole, basically a work session of council to discuss these items. Is the goal still for August to do that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think we, I think sooner I think sooner the better. Be yeah. Okay. Yeah. As long as yeah. And maybe the uh, or maybe if not August, um, since we're doing the September fourth or fifth meeting, that might be a possibility too. Whatever that. And, and part of our discussion truly is is moving forward in the future, not so much changing what there. I think there's some inequities in this. To be quite honest, I don't know how you have one entertainment district gets less than another entertainment district that doesn't produce the same amount of hospitality tax collected. I think we still have to get those eligible expenses. As you know, I spent some time going through all of these, and we have lots of questions about what's eligible and what's not. I think that we are paying for product, for services and goods and so forth that aren't eligible. And I'm not sure how it slipped through our thing, but we're going to do a fundamental house cleaning. And I think moving forward, we need to set some clear designations clear rules and what's acceptable and what's not for reimbursables because i think it's gotten a little out of whack um, i also think we have to have the discussions we discussed earlier um, you know what's eligible what's not what what qualifies and 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 looking at the overall uh, you know we say every year that we're going to look at trying to figure out ways to have more inclusion but we continue to give groups more and more and not get new groups in at some point this is not supposed to be your lifeline this is supposed to just be an add-on and it's becoming a lifeline for certain groups and we cannot do that anymore yes. all right well, uh, mr. mr davis and then uh mr mcdowell um i don't want to be Repetitive of uh, Daniel's statement, but you know this is my annual <laughs> statement. And that is that um, I'd like to see us um, provide some opportunities or some kind of lifeline for the smaller groups. Um, one to at least get their feet in the door, and two to grow, such as the others that have grown using these these, these funds. Um, and I. I do agree that uh, you know going back to, to when we was I here when, when we first uh, initiated the uh, passed the ordinance the expectation was that uh, um, an organization would not uh, make this their lifeline at some point you know they would uh, evolve to to a point where they can um, either be sustainable or that they, they look, look for other resources. But if that does not happen, then the door does not open for other organizations, period. So uh, I'd like to see smaller groups and some of the more disadvantaged groups um, um, see them see more participation using these dollars. Um, believe it or not, the funds come from all parts of this city. Yes, sir. Amen. Mr. McDowell. Yeah. John, I want to say thanks for you and the committee for doing such a good job. It's, um, I think it's to our advantage to have folk <clears throat> who are going to come and look at what we do and make recommendations as such. Thank you so much. The other piece of that is I think we have a unique opportunity as particularly when we start talking about age tax. There are organizations out there that has not gotten anything. And a part of that, of course, is I think it has to be a part of education. I think it has to be a part of getting folk ready to be persons who are endeavoring to expand this city of ours. So, of course, I got an amen in the amen's corner back here somewhere. That's what you did. <laughs> it sounds sound like somebody from St. John Baptist back there. I, that, thought, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I think we've got a unique opportunity, I think, as we fund organizations that we sensitize ourselves to those organizations that are small and have the ability to expand themselves and, of course, to expand this city of ours. Amen. So thank you all so much for what you do. It's, it's a time, it's a time, uh, it's very timely, uh, but it's also very laborious to do this, and we thank you for that. Thank Absolutely, you. John. You and the, you and the entire committee, and, and thank you, Ginger, for your first year on the job. Thank uh, you, this new task, <laughs> you, you did a great job. I'm going. I'm going to call you Ginger for now on. So that's fine. All right. All right. Super. So you glad right. it's over with, not Ginger? Yeah. Sir. Glad it's over. Yeah. Dee Dee's been wearing us out. She wa she wanted it done yesterday. Yes. So um, I want to thank her too, Mr. Mayor, and and not let her go just yet because you've got one more item, the carry forwards. Um, for fiscal year 2017-2018. Is there a motion? I move that we approve the list of carry forwards as stated in Ginger's July the 11th, 2018 memo. Second. Any discussion? With the previous question, the clerk call the roll. Mr. Rickman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Uh, are there other organizations that have not requested carry forward that might not have expended funds that might also go into the larger pot at some point too? There's a small amount. Small amount. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll keep an eye on it. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And thank um, you to the committees as well. Yeah. Thank you. Madam City Manager, I, I neglected to mention that Ms. Devine asked that we hold item 41. Okay. All right. So uh, that's all right with y'all. Let's, uh, let's go to 42. Yeah. I just... Just want to just want to make a note that I want to make sure that everybody realizes we need to have a candidate from District Four. There's no representation on that board from District Four. Mr. Baird, you mean on the Housing Authority, Daniel? That's correct. Okay. So you're talking uh, about instead of three, you're, t you're looking at four now. We're not. Well, we're not doing anything on 41 right now. Right. But, yeah, I was well, he, he, but he was, I was mentioning. Going to ask to defer it. Yeah, hold, yeah, hold on, hold on that. Right. And um, but Mr. Rick had been wanting to make it clear that District Four needs representation on the um, Housing Authority Board. All right. Um, uh, is there a motion um, for uh, the tree, Columbia Tree and Appearance Commission, Mr. Duval? Mr. Ma oh, Mr. Davis, whoever. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to suggest that we approve the reappointment of Presley Hogue and add to that list uh, Chris Goodman, Emery Trapp, Charles Pippin, and Carolyn Dugan. All right. Uh, is there a second? Second. And everyone's fine with the geographical distribution and representation? It's awfully lopsided. You got somebody you want to you want to hold some slots and seat some applicants? I think it'd be nice to get some more of our districts engaged. Thank you. You got seven from District Three and you're gonna add two more. So you're back to seven. But you go back to seven, you got two coming off and you go back to seven. You wanna put a district four in there or Brian? Is any of those seven up? Uh, here's Brian. Anytime soon, we could take a Emory trap off. Ms. Belton, any, any, any of those slots coming up anytime soon? That works for me. Okay, we, we've, got, we've had a compromise. All right. Uh, we would put Brian Allen in District 4 in instead of Emory Trap in District 3, and Mr. Trap can reapply. All right. Are there any I would slots coming that. up soon? No. Um, Elizabeth Marks, um, she expires in August. Mm -hmm. But we went on ahead and put her on this particular agenda for, um, for either to reappoint or to appoint someone else in that position in that seat. Right. She was in. Was she in? She's your in District Two. Okay. Turn your mic. Move, I can't hear. Move the previous question. Um, <laughs> she, she would be. She would be tapped out, right? You know? She would be. Two terms. She served two terms. She yeah. has served two terms. Is she eligible for third? It no. is at. It is. Council can reappoint her, but it has to be a super vote, if I'm not mistaken, on the five, amended seven. resolution. It has to be five the, votes to vote her for a third question. term. Ready. Move the previous question. Move. Clerk, call the roll. Aye. 
Mr. McDowell. Aye. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Are there any um, reports, uh, committee reports or referrals to committee? Mr. Duvall. Uh, point of personal privilege, Mr. Mayor. At 6.30 in the afternoon of July the 17th in 1965, I married my bride. You're, you're late here now. And it's been 53 years. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to my homegrown tomato sandwich when I get home. <laughs> Congratulations, so you got Holly. a proclamation for your bride. I'll well, tell you what, we somebody go buy that lady some flowers and <laughs> some candy and everything else. Congratulations, Howard. That's that's wonderful. Uh, any reports or referrals to committee? All right. Uh, seeing none, we're in a period of public discussion. Um, so I'm going to go in the order in which I've received those who signed up. I know some issues have been addressed with the H tax discussion. Uh, but Mr. Blackman signed up first. Is he gone? Did he talk to you already, Daniel? Who? Uh, Mr. Blackman. I think he's gone. Yeah, I spoke to okay. him. Okay. All right. Sure Good did. Deal. Um, the beautiful little Miss Chloe Thompson. And I will tell you all that um, I, I see these shirts. These shirts are awesome. We had the opportunity to spend some time with um, uh, Miss Joy Holman this weekend, uh, uh, recognizing her contributions as she was awarded the Order of the Palmetto uh, by a government master, and it was a it was a moving experience. Double Dutch forces still going strong. Go ahead, superstar. Good evening to the Honorable Mayor Steve Benjamin, City Council members. My name is Chloe Jai Thompson. I reside in District Three at 700 Woodrow Street, Apartment 606. I recently heard that you are considering closing Martin Luther King Jr. Park, King Park, on Sundays. This would be a bad idea for the following reasons. I am a member of the world champion Double Dutch Forces Jump Rope Team. We practice at King Park every Sunday during the school year. Most of the Double Dutch team cannot make it to practice during the weekdays because they are involved in after school activities. So we rely on Saturdays and Sundays during the school year to practice so that we can defend our world champion status each year. Also, a lot of kids go there to play basketball, enjoy the company of others, get a snack, or play inside when the weather is cold or there is a storm. What would happen if you did close the parks on Sundays? We would lose a double dutch practice day, and children who play there would have no safe place to play due to all the construction on the field. These are the reasons why you should not close the park on Sundays. I hope that you will take this into consideration and make the decision to keep King Park open on Sundays. On Sundays. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Chloe to see what engagement and um, you know voicing your opinion it really does matter right so we're not closing the park on Sundays all through the year it's always open on Sundays but we were trying to give our staff you know they work with you really hard seven days a week and during the summer months we've looked at like our numbers to see who's attending and tracking attendance and it's pretty low for the most part on Sundays but for you all we'll make sure that we have staff there to work with you, even on Sundays during the summer. But the MLK Park hours were changed on the summer months on Sundays because of the numbers that attend on Sundays. But we'll make exceptions. Our staff already knows you all want to practice on Sundays, so that's fine. So we'll make sure you have a way to practice on Sundays. Okay? So, uh, so we we move the park stay open on Sunday for <laughs> Chloe and. <laughs> And, and all these other beautiful babies who signed up to speak, and some of the grown folk, too. Uh, is there a second? Second. A discussion. Let's move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Aye. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. <laughs> he wants the jump rope, too. 
Mayor Mayor Mayor. 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 Aye. And my dear, um, thank you. And I want to thank all the young people. Anybody, any other young people signed up to speak on this? Because if, if so, we want to, well, young or young, youngish people. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I want to make sure all the babies speak, but, but certainly anyone else who wants to speak. The park's going to be open on Sunday. I mean, that, that's, we're going to make sure that that's the case. But we all, we're always trying, as Ms. As, uh, Ms. Wilson mentioned, also trying to recognize the fact uh, that our, our staff, that they have families too, making sure that they're able to spend some time at home on, on Sundays. But it's so important, as you young people know, we got some young people over here from um, <clears throat> Rich as well. It's, it's important that you come and you tell people exactly how you feel, what's important to you, and then the more and more you voice your opinion, and when you turn 18 years old, you register to vote, and you, and, you, you, and you register your opinion that way too, at the ballot box. You go to every election, and you pick the man or woman of your choice, and if, they, if you like them and you love them, you vote for them again. If you don't, you, you try your best to send them home. That's the way it works in, 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 the, in the greatest democratic nation in the history of the world. But you gotta remain involved. It's so important that, that you do so. so we're proud of y'all, so we're so we're so glad you're here. And Mr. Davis, Mr. Mayor, will work with them on a specific time on uh, Sunday. Randy, okay, uh, but I, I I see I see a forehead and a microphone. Go for it, baby. What you got? Head speak, honey. You want me to help? So it's a point of clarity. Yes, ma'am. For those that did not hear specifically what Miss Wilson. So did we hear correctly that the decision was made not to close the park on Sunday? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Well, well was it was never right. going to be closed on Sundays during the, the year. School year. It is only three more Sundays anyway in the summer where it would be closed on Sundays, but it on, during the summer months. That well, was but modified hours in the summer is what you're talking so, about. So let's, um, so a closure point would be futuristically. So for the future. Um, the decision that was made to close the park during the summer was vital, particularly for young people that don't have finances to go elsewhere or don't have other options for recreation. That was the main point of contention uh, for those of us that have to listen to it mm -hmm. every Sunday afternoon mm -hmm. because it was closed. But now that this has been reconciled, we would hope that for next summer that there would be consideration not to close it on Sundays because especially with the construction, hopefully it'll be done by then. But particularly now, even those three Sundays are important to many of the young people in that community. Are you well, the and base? we look at the attendance. So I would commit that we'll look at that attendance again, because I, it may be that I'm sure you are hearing that a lot, but attendance numbers may not reflect it as you're describing. So we have to work with our staff, and as the mayor said, obviously Sundays are important to family, and so our staff works seven days a week for the most part. Mm -hmm. We're looking at attendance numbers to justify them being away from their families as much too, but we commit to looking at a modified schedule, as I said, and we'll make amends for them to be there on Sundays to practice. I mean, that's not a problem at all. Are any of the kids participating in the skills and drills this week? Awesome. Awesome. Football? We appreciate it. Football? Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, babies. What do you want to say? You straight? <laughs> okay. All right. Femi. Femi, hey, brother. Hey, Femi. You will allow me. Lift the microphone up, Femi. The city manager talked about staff wanting Sundays off. There are so many people who work in several places who do not have every Sunday off. Mm hmm. I work for Lowe's part time, mm -hmm. and I don't get every Sunday off. Mm -hmm. Having an alternative to keep our parks open, the only time that we can have quality family time at the park, mm -hmm. I will ask you all to keep the place open. Now, in terms mm -hmm. of attendance, ain't nobody there counting who came in the morning. <clears throat> And who came in the afternoon and yes, who came in the evening. Yep. And I've lived in that park for 45 years. So we know how in that community for 45 years. 
we know how our folks. Sure, yeah, we, we understand that, Femi. Obviously, um, the, your experience and, and your priorities are, are, are the same ones that we share. Ms. Wilson's responsibility is also to make sure our, our employees are healthy and happy and have family lives too. So, but I, but I appreciate, we appreciate your input. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right. Uh, so, Dr. Gaddis has spoken. Um, the Sumter babies were up here earlier. All right. So, uh, I see um, Naheem and Chase Sumter. Okay. All right. Thank you. Now, um, Mama G, Dr. Miller, it's on you. Good evening, Mayor Benjamin, evening City Council, you. City Manager, City Clerk, and Mr. Davis. This evening, it's very exciting to uh, present. This is the new and upcoming in concert with the Department of Juvenile Justice team. We also have media specialists here who have won incredible national awards over the last month. They very quickly, must not push this on floor, um, will give their uh, outline to you. And on a personal note, I would like to say, woohoo, I'm 65 now. <laughs> So I'm really excited about that uh, and to see the young people who will be coming to speak to you. Um, I will mention this, Mr. Gerard Washington, to my right, is leaving. Come on. He's going to another city, but to great things. So Gerard, awesome. As uh, Mama G stated, I am leaving, but it's only an hour away. And um, I'll still be a part of Rich. So I'm not abandoning her so, <laughs> or any of my uh, new members. So um, yeah, I still paint and draw okay. for the program. You do fantastic work. Yes, sir. All right. And blessed with some of it. Onward and upward. Keep doing great things, OK? Wherever you. you are. All right? Yes, sir. All right. Introduce yourselves. Um, just to introduce myself, my name is Patrick Rutledge. I'm a music artist and a filmmaker. I just got my bachelor's degree in media arts from the University of South Carolina with okay. an associate's in business administration, seeking a master's degree in cinematography. Um, my goal is to create a platform not only for myself, but for my colleagues and other aspiring uh, creatives to expand, produce, and uh, sustain themselves in the process. Awesome. Great. Congratulations. Great. Good evening. My name is Terrence Duran. I am a upcoming filmmaker and entrepreneur. Um, I retrieve my studies from the Art Institute of Charlotte in digital film and video production. And my personal goal is to create a media hub for Columbia and get us ahead in the media space and actually, you know, be up there with New York and LA and all the big cities. All right. Great. Good evening. My name is Natalie Watson. I also just received my bachelor's degree from USC for media arts. I also have my associates in graphic design and hopefully to get my master's over at Howard in filming. My main goal is to show there's um, women in the field that do actually cinematography. Mainly we're known for costume designers or makeup artists rather than actually being behind the camera. And so my idea is to show a platform for young females that there are other there are other female cinematographers out there, and even though it's a male dominant field. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. All right. Thank you. Good. Good afternoon. My name is um, Andrew Gadgetar. And I'm Faith Creech. And we are the, um, we are the uh, co founders of Carolina Film Network, which is a nonprofit organization right here in Columbia. And we also are the founders of Picture Media Group Production Company. Um, I recently received accreditation with the Hollywood um, level um, Producers Guild of America in, in uh, LA. And we also just received uh, several awards at the um, Rising Star Academy Awards in Philadelphia um, last month. And we are in conjunction with um, the Rich Program uh, and have an upcoming project to do a documentary on Mama G. Awesome, all right, that's gonna be fun. The creative class is alive and well. 
And of course, I would like to ask for a picture, for a photograph, Perhaps. and yeah. the fact that all these young adults here are volunteers. And I think it's They're important. They're all yeah. volunteers. Yes, sir. And, and some of you who, who may be um, not be as familiar with the work that Dr. Miller has been doing, uh, these uh, young men and women are mentoring young men and women all across this community. Uh, some that, that, that others have given up on a long time ago and are helping uh, them uh, reach heights that many of them, I think, believe never would have, uh, uh, they never would have achieved. Um, so your, your commitment to community is incredible. The creative class is alive and well. Some really creative people here. Yes. And, thank, thank and I can't you, wait, if, you, if, if the movie's a documentary, I want to get a word on, on, the, on the documentary. I, I will not be a stand-in for any of her, uh, uh, her serious work. Uh, uh, no, no, the, the swords come out. I want to be nowhere in sight. Uh, we're going to take a picture together? Yes, sir. All right, let's do Thank it. Thank you very much. All right. Um, Ms. Lee Lumpkin. Hello, everybody. I will only take a moment. I'm Lee Lumpkin with Columbia Classical Ballet, but I wanted to take this opportunity. As you know, we were physically demolished by the flood of 2015, but not psychologically demolished. And we were in debt of 91000 We have lived this for three years. What you did last year for us with your surplus, I cannot tell you the difference it made to us in every way. It lifted us. And we are so close. We're so close to being out of debt from the flood that we can taste it. But I want to tell you about something so wonderful that has happened. And Rodenko said, please don't talk about me, but of course I'm going to. He just left um, Orlando sweeping the World Ballet Competition, winning the gold, winning the silver, our Japanese and Chinese dancers. And what it's done for us, we've, we've been kind of busy the last two and a half years keeping up with what had happened to us in the debt. And now we have this new lease on life, these amazing dancers that are winners in the world. And we want to keep them. Right now, if you went to D.C. and opened their playbill, you would see that their four principals were from Columbia Classical Ballet. And they can pay them in D.C. five and six times what we can. And we understand that, and we believe in the American dream like no one else but... We want to keep our, our dancers that are winners here in Columbia as long as we can. So our mission is outreach, and you know that, and that's what I'm always talking about. But today I'm saying is that surplus as you look at it. We are fighting the fight to keep these amazing dancers here in our city, and we need to pay them more to do that. Many went to school in their countries at age three, and they lived to dance and we need to help them have what they need. We need to pay them fairly. So we come to you to just please keep us especially in your mind when you look at the surplus and just know how grateful, how appreciative, and how proud we are, um, Columbia Classical Ballet, to be your ballet in this city. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Lee. Rudenko, congratulations. That's, uh it's incredible news, and uh, just keep up the great work. And and well, we we are we are on due notice of other other requests, Lee. And uh, 
Rodenko, you're in charge of managing Lee, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Did you want to say something? Say something on the record. I want to make sure people can hear you. I'm sorry. I really, it's not that I really want to talk, but I really am proud that uh, Columbia Classical Ballet has a five gold and silver medalist, which really puts us to be probably one of the few companies in Southeast that has this many medalists. So I think it really is it's amazing. I'm very proud. And I thank you very much for, for your help. And I think Lee said everything. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rodenko. Um, um, Ellen Blundy? She's gone? OK. Um, is Katie Bolden? Is Katie here? Oh, there you go. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, I have two questions and one comment. My first question is concerning Brooklyn, Washington Heights, the burning of the houses over there. I understand there is an infrastructure in for money for is am I not right? But my thing is, do we have anything in place, a plan for the construction to restore the houses in the neighborhood? The um the houses that have been burned, or just the houses in period? The houses that's burned and the seniors that need help to restore well, some of the construction. You, you may remember, just, uh, okay. you may have been in the room, we, we established the PAIR program and the MAP program two years right. ago, specifically for that purpose, the PAIR program uh, to uh, help rehab with grant money, right. landlord-owned um, homes, for, for, and, and also the MAP program to help folks weatherize and update their homes, both grant programs, I think, funded to the tune of over a million dollars. There was significant opposition right. uh, by some people we all know and love who opposed participation. Those programs were designed specifically right. for Booker Washington House. But I understood when I went to the, um, the hearing of the speaking down at Drew Wellness Park approximately about two years ago, mm -hmm. um, there was a young man, and he said, we have a grant, I think, from Washington to help the people in the neighborhood, but after researching, maybe we're not talking about the same grant, it was a forgivable loan, and they were going to put a lien against the people's houses. Is that not the same grant? It, they both, they were both grant programs, and I, and I, I was actually there. Right. I was there speaking about the Belfield Center. Um, both programs that were designed specifically for um, Booker Washington Heights, and since no one applied for them there, they, all the money went to North Columbia. I think almost all of it went to 29203. Right. So, so, so it's important to note that, that we specifically designed programs for that specific purpose, and people in the neighborhood were dissuaded from participating and using them. So I just want to make sure that, that that's, that's clear. Okay. Have we made any progress about the housing that was burnt down? And very, and very, well, arrest has been made, but also um, the... Uh, the neighborhood is still, of course, one of the targeted neighborhoods for, for utilization of CDBG and home funds and other funds uh, coming uh, through the city from federal funds. So that has not changed. Okay, it's still a priority. It's still, the reason it's still a priority. I'm asking is because there are seniors, you know, for a fact there, they have to make determination whether they're going to pay their um, light bill or whether they're going to pay their medical bill. So these are the things that we need to see. And another, my other question is, and I've been told by Sam and Mr. McDowell, and we've been talking about this over and over again, we need a grocery store in our neighborhood. And they said, we have a plan, we have a plan in pl place. You can have a plan, and my grand, great grandkids would be, I guess, going to the grocery store. We would like to know more about that plan for our neighborhood, and we can help you and support you in that plan. Please let us know because we are tired of going out of our neighborhoods, going way beyond picking up the seniors, taking them. A lot of seniors don't have transportation, not just seniors, but single parents don't have transportation to get to the stores. And we have to pay what they uh, price are. And the price, is, I mean, since it's not just that neighborhood, it's several neighborhoods. So we're asking y'all, please, please consider getting us a grocery store in Beltline or either Fair Road neighborhood, so our people can go to the store. Secondly, and I've always come up here and I've always enjoyed coming to City Hall, and you've always was very cordial and kind, 
But I had an experience the other day when I was up here. It was not pretty at all. I had someone who was very disrespectful to me, and she knew who I'm talking about. And I hope that do not happen again. Because when I come up here, I always speak to everyone, and they always speak back. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, I will say this, um, Katie, a lot, of, a lot of good things are happening on the, on the grocery store front. We can talk a little bit more about, about that. Just a, a number of different creative approaches just to make sure that people in the community in the interim um, have access to fresh uh, foods. And some of them will be physical um, improvements. Some will be mobility issues that we're going to okay. work together to address. But um, Mr. McDowell and, and I and some others have been working directly you know, on that. I'm willing to so we'll talk about anything. that to help right. the people in sure. the neighborhood. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kay. Thank you. All right. Uh, uh, Mr. Desi Fernandez, Desi, did you just want to sign? Did you sign up? You good? Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> I think Ms. Akira Scott and Ms. Glennie Scott are both gone. I think those were some of the beautiful young people uh, as well who are gone. Um, Ms. Uh, Andrea Davis. Are you? Good evening. Hey, how are you? Um, I just would like to add up. Uh, good evening to the council. I am Benjamin Mayor. Um, I would uh, like to add a footnote to the MLK part. Yes, ma'am. Um, being open on Sundays. If you could please consider uh, accepting volunteers to mm -hmm. come and participate to help in um, increasing that attendance this on Sundays, we would be more than glad to, to do that. Help with attendance or help staff the park? Which one? Help the staff and volunteers. Uh, I, I was going to ask Femi to do that. Then I said I really didn't want Femi doing that. <laughs> we, we, we might actually take you guys up on it. But, but yes, uh, okay. um, because we want, I mean, yeah. I've been in that park for over 30 years. Sure. And it has not just been just the advocate for sure. in, inspiring the yes. Double Dutch Forces, but has also been an advocate in inspiring the youth outside. Um, a lot of these jumpers have sister siblings, sure. um, and they don't necessarily participate in Double Dutch, but they're in a safe environment and yeah. they can go to yeah. the next room Absolutely. over. So if no, that's don't. another way to help keep those doors open for the youth on Sundays, volunteers are more than welcome Absolutely. to come Absolutely. out. Absolutely. I encourage you to talk to Mr. Davis in the back. Um, uh, probably of no relations, but since you don't know him, but yeah. he's right there. Uh, go ahead, no, but, but thank you. No problem. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, uh, Ms. Chardé Avents, plus one. Plus one, hello. Um, I'm also going to piggyback up with uh, Ms. Davis just said about King Park. I was a student athlete um, here from Columbia, went to Columbia High, played every sport. Um, I even, you know, we did things on Sundays as far as church, but it allowed me to be able to commit to Double Dutch. I know that maybe if you had like um, a window hour, I mean, a couple of hours for the, for the jumpers to be open, I'm open to volunteering as well. But those three and four hours made a big difference. And I know it may not sound like it does, but those practices were very intense, but it allowed us to be competitive and to, um, also, you know, be in a safe environment on Sundays, and that is a really big deal down there, especially at sure. King Park. So I just want to encourage you guys to know that it wouldn't just benefit the jumpers, but it also would benefit the community and the children. 33 world championships, I think, yeah. is uh, 33, 33. It, yes. it's, a, it's, it's amazing. No, we, we recognize that our, our city parks are indeed uh, a cornerstone of, of, of all of our communities across the city. So. Um, I duly noted and appreciate your, your um, commitment to the park. And thank you for this weekend. Uh, thank you for what? Had, um, the Palmetto Award. Oh, absolutely. Oh, that was wonderful. That, 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 that was wonderful. I'm glad my daughter's not here. She'd love your hair. Oh. And, and it would drive her daddy crazy, but she'd love it. Uh, she'd love it. So, all right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. And you, and you, you, want, you, want, you want to say something about Joy? I mean, so, so oh, I, 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 I mentioned it earlier. Um, uh, we had a chance um, on behalf of, of uh, Governor McMaster, who, who uh, is staff process to order the Pat Mando, our state's highest award in record time, um, uh, to recognize the contributions of Joy Holman, I guess has been with us 27 years or so at, at the city and kind of the force behind 
the double dutch uh, forces and it's just been um, uh, so if you want to say something about joy it would be well appreciated I'll say something real quick and I know I has been in double dutch longer than me but you know not too much longer <laughs> um, I started jumping double dutch at the age of three um, my mother and joy played softball together so the name of our team was the e ebony ladies um, I begged joy she said you have to be four you have to be four she said every time she saw me I would just Am I four? Am, I'm almost four. Can I jump? And, uh, you know, that was a running joke. But uh, my mom made me sign a contract and I actually had to finish. I had to do it until I was 18 years old. But the Double Dutch Force and Joy taught me things that people pay thousands of dollars and go to Tony Robbins, cons, um, you know, uh, events to, to learn and, you know, tenacity and um, fellowship and teamwork and interdependency. Although we are independent of one another, we are interdependent on another. Absolutely. And um, she exposed us. Um, you know, we traveled all across the world from France to, you know, record breakers in, in Europe. And there's so many things that we got exposed to and things that I could never even really express to you. But the things that she taught me are so internal and they're locked deep in my heart. And I know that it, she and the Double Dutch Forces have made me a better woman, a better wife. And I know it made me a better mom because um, we'll never give up. Um, you know, I know a lot of people should have been here today, but you see, I'm here plus one. So, you know, it doesn't matter. We have to get the job done and we have to see everything through. And that's something that um, Joy is doing from her, from her, I'm sorry. That's something that she's doing from her deathbed. And I hate to, you know, break the news that way, but um, she's getting things done in days that it takes people's, people years to do, you know? And um, I just hope that you hold the double duchess near and dear to your heart and hopefully we can get a documentary done by this crew over here. Um, you know, a Netflix special. Um, we actually did a, a special. Um, and there's so many different opportunities that, you know, Double Dutch has allowed us to do. And I thank the city for allowing Double Dutch to be a part of the community because it also put Columbia on the map. You know, so, Amen. you know, we would, I would really like to just thank the city, city council for allowing Double Dutch to, to be along, around for so long. Absolutely. Um, I would also like to add to that. Um, if you have noticed or have been throughout the city, in certain areas you will see signs that have already been a part of the Columbia and Lexington areas that say Double Dutch Forces, the home of Double Dutch Forces. Um, in this time, uh, it, it's, it's an intimate moment for us. Um, however, we are not going to let our team go down. We're not gonna let our team die. We're gonna to continue to reach out and live on through the wishes that Joy would want us to continue to go. Um, in addition to that, the signs, if at all possible, I will, am requesting if in the future, if it is um, not as we wish, that ribbons could please be put on those signs. Um, in honor of joy. Yeah, we have a new process, and I, I'm, I'm going to um, nominate that we do some um, street renaming or court renaming uh, down there in full participation with the neighborhood, uh, Mr. McDowell. <laughs> and um, but but we're, but um, I pledge on on this weekend to start that process, and, and we'll, so we'll, we'll work. So much. She was truly pleased. Uh, we'll need we'll need your help communicating with the neighborhood. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank y'all. Appreciate y'all. That's, that's a beautiful baby too. That's right. Is that is that a future right, have, jumper there? Uh, that, 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 jump or turn, it doesn't I, matter. Jump or turn, <laughs> turn. All right. There you go. All right. Um, we have no one else who's signed up to speak. Um, we have a non-debatable motion to adjourn. I'm sorry. Um, uh, you, 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 you must have walked out and walked back in, John. I called on you earlier. You're on the clock. All right. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Mr. Council. I moved to Columbia in 1958. But y'all don't want to hear the long story. I'm truly concerned with how hard it is. I've been in the real estate business since 1975. And I'm concerned about how hard it is for homeowners to maintain their properties in certain neighborhoods. I understand 
preservation. I understand historical properties. I have a hard time understanding why you won't let somebody replace their windows with modern technology initiated windows. Jacksonville, Florida has three historical neighborhoods. Columbia has 15. And they all run by different rules. Mm -hmm. I love Columbia. I've been here since 58. Spent eight years on the City Planning Commission. But our rules for maintaining properties. Columbia's an old town. We got a lot of properties that need renovations and unfortunately, because city policies have created this cloud, the owners can't do them reasonably Mm -hmm. And I think you all know this, sure. and I appreciate thank, your time. Thank you. Thank, thank you, John. Daniel, will you guys prepare to talk about the historic preservation or economic and community development? Would, would, I know that's something Mr. Rickman has been talking about. Which one? development was first, but th that's part of it. All right. So because it, it has to deal with the DDRC it, at the end. Yeah, yeah. So uh, which, of, which of those two? On the, uh, okay. So we're, it's going to be on the subcommittee agenda to talk about this specific issue. John, obviously those historic, uh, those districts are all established by the, by the people who live in those districts. But, they, but, they, but, it's, but it's proven to be very difficult and cumbersome. And that's something that Mr. Rickman raises at, uh, at um, um, every meeting. So let's make sure he's plugged into when the committee discusses it and see if we can hammer something out that makes some sense. But thank you, John. But John, I think you're talking specifically about DDRC and the issues surrounding no, no, the rules. No, I'm, the, the talk rules. I'm, I'm talking about... The, the rules that govern. He's talking about the subjectiveness done by at a staff level, and not also at a committee level, you. which is a clear problem. It's, it's the subjectiveness which, which by is, staff. Which is a fantastic reason for a subcommittee discussion, which is what we're going to have. How soon? July 31st. July 31st. We'll have a, a meeting here at City Hall to discuss it. All right? Thank you, John. I'll be here. Is there a motion to adjourn? So we'll move. Uh, discussion. The previous question, Kirk Collarow. Thank you, John. <laughs> Third, Mr. right? Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Have a good evening.